JBN, we keep you informed. Three men shot dead, 12-year-old among two injured in Portmore. Three men were shot dead and two other people injured by unknown assailants on Maryland Road in Waterford, Portmore, St. Catherine, on Saturday, June 22, the police are reporting. The deceased have been identified as 30-year-old Nicholas Douglas, otherwise called Shane of Hopewell Road, 19-year-old Brandon Beckford of Bianca Way, and 37-year-old Marlon Booth of Maryland Road, all of Waterford, Portmore. A 12-year-old boy and the other man who was injured in the shooting remains hospitalized. Reports from the Major Investigation Division are that the males were among a group of people playing games along the pathway about 9.25 p.m. They were allegedly approached by armed men who opened gunfire. The victims were taken to the hospital where Douglas, Beckford and Booth were pronounced dead and the other two injured individuals admitted in stable condition. Alleged shootout in St. Catherine, men in custody, guns seized. One man is on the police guardian hospital and another has been arrested following an alleged confrontation with members of the security forces in Kitson Town, St. Catherine on Saturday. The police report that about 2 p.m., a joint police military team was on duty in the area when they came under gunfire by armed men traveling in a motor car on the Kitson Town main road. The team reportedly took evasive action and following the confrontation, one of the alleged assailants was found with gunshot wounds. The police say was taken to the hospital, where is admitted under police guard. They say follow-up operations in the area led to the arrest of another alleged assailant involved in the incident. According to the police, he was found in possession of a Glock pistol and eight rounds of ammunition which was subsequently seized. The police say a Jamaica Defense Force vehicle was damaged during the incident. The police say they are searching for the other men involved in the incident. The Independent Commission of Investigations was informed. Firearms seized in Manchester, man arrested. One man was taken into custody following the seizure for firearm and ammunition in Good Hope District, Manchester on Saturday. The police say a team was conducting operations in the area about 11 p.m. When a man was seen at a bar acting in a manner that arose their suspicion, he was allegedly seen removing a firearm from his waistband and placing it between a cushions on a sofa. The police say was accosted and a firearm, a Glock pistol, with a magazine containing 12 9mm cartridges seized. Firearm recovered from murdered man's waistband. The police are probing the death of a man on Texaco Lane in Bayshore Park, Harborview yesterday after recovering a 9mm pistol and a 10 rounds of ammunition at the scene. Dead is 41-year-old Dennis McIntosh, otherwise called schoolers of no fixed address. According to police reports, residents heard explosions shortly after 11 p.m. and summoned the lawmen. Upon the arrival, McIntosh was seen lying on the roadway with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. During the processing of the scene, lawmen discovered a firearm with seven rounds of ammunition in McIntosh's waistband. Police said an additional three rounds were removed from his pocket. Jamaicans not convinced about local gunfight. Jamaicans at home and abroad said they have little faith in the authorities' efforts to stop the flow of illegal guns into the island and away from inner city youths who regard them as business and power. Dozens of teenagers and young adults have been charged with murder, shooting, or for possessing an illegal gun since 2017. And according to police statistics, most of their victims are from similar age groups. But that is no surprise to Milton Tomlinson, who through the Peace Management Initiative, PMI, has for years been working assiduously to save troubled youngsters living in the island's toughest communities. I don't know how we're going to stop that. Gun is business and gun is power. You can't stop business. People are always going to find ways and means, argued Tomlinson, explaining that the business starts from gun manufacturers and ends with gangsters in local communities. Gun is money and a man is going to find a way to make his dollar. And when a youth has him strap, it gives him power and protection. So a woman will know a youth strap, but she's seeing it as protection and he's seeing it as his power, continued Tomlinson. Adding that many inner city youths have no educational jobs by which they can be respected. When a man has a gun, he feels indispensable. Only a few men can have a gun and hold it. Don't let anybody else know, he continued. Adding that despite counseling, some Jamaican youngsters are unreachable. 
He said that rather than trying to stem the proliferation of illegal guns, the government should put more energy into stopping the flow of ammunition. Last year, the police seized more than 720 guns, 54 of which were rifles. The numbers of 2017 were 862 and 67 respectively, while 2016 accounted for 649 gun seizures, including 27 rifles. Approximately 11,230 rounds of ammunition were taken off the streets by the police. While for 2017 and 2016, the numbers were 22,158 and 8,687 respectively. Ian Curtis, a Jamaican living in Miami, Florida since 2001, and an operator of a Jamaican restaurant, said that the law of the gunners are strong and that community dance exercised less control in reining in young bad men unlike in yesteryear. Killing a yard won't stop and the guns won't stop either. Once you're in Jamaica and messing around people and you're not taking an attack, you're going to die, said Curtis. Outlining the law of the street in sections of Spanish Town St. Catherine and Waltham Park Road, Kingston, where he once lived. The guns won't stop coming in, no care what them do. Even if them stop it, the youths are still going to make one pop and use them, he said. Crime can go down because people are making money in Jamaica, but the youths not taking any attack from anyone and that is the problem. The only thing I could think that could stop what's going on in that yard right now is a church. If a man gets up one day and just believe in God, believe in equal rights and justice, that is the only way, he offered, as his co-operator Nadine Patrice called for increased investment in Jamaican youths. Jeffrey Blake, president of the Math Club Jamaica, a not-for-profit organization aimed at inspiring youths through education, argued that once there is high demand, the guns will continue to flow into the island. No matter what the issues are, my take on the matter is if there is no need for the guns, then there will be no reason for supply. If I'm working the problem, I would look at the end where Jamaica is receiving the guns, said Blake, a retired U.S. Army man with 26 years of military service. We have so many young people who are so gullible and who have a need to get rich quick. The easy way out is to get a gun and do whatever them do with the guns. One of the ways of cutting that off is to provide more opportunity for the youths, said Blake, who grew up in George's Lane, a gritty community in Kingston Central. If they have enough opportunities, then there won't be any need for them to want to become criminals, said Blake, arguing that there is more that the authorities can do, but that they are hindered by corruption. U.S. Coast Guard denies ill-treatment of Jamaican fishermen. The United States Coast Guard, USCG, has denied claims that it ill-treated five Jamaican fishermen who were apprehended in Asian waters in 2017. The USCG denied the allegations made by the fishermen and the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, that they were ill-treated between mid-September and mid-October 2017. The Jamaican authorities had approved the detention of the men under the so-called Ship Rider Agreement between Caribbean states and the U.S. on the basis that the Coast Guard had recovered over 600 pounds of ganja which had been jettisoned by the fishermen during the interdiction. The Coast Guard complies with both international and U.S. domestic law and works closely with our Department of Justice and the Department of State colleagues to ensure compliance. All suspects are cared for humanely while preserving the security of both the crew and the suspects. The USCG responded to questions raised by the local media since last week. The Coast Guard explained that they were unable to transfer the detainees ashore in Puerto Rico, given the conditions there following Hurricane Maria and for the safety of the detainees. In mid-October 2017, the five detainees were transferred into the custody of Homeland Security Investigations agents in Port Everglades, Florida. In January 2018, each of the crew members pled guilty to making a false official statement to a law enforcement officer and they were sentenced to 10 months imprisonment. They were eventually deported to Jamaica last year. However, the Jamaican Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade says it has no evidence of the fishermen making any contact with its consular services in the United States while they were detained or with the ministry since their return last year. The U.S. Coast Guard insisted that it complies with both international and U.S. domestic law and works closely with the Department of Justice and the Department of State to ensure compliance. All suspects are cared for humanely while preserving the security of both the crew and the suspects, the USCG said. The Coast Guard added that it works diligently with the Department of Justice, 
U.S. law enforcement agencies and partner nations to transfer suspects ashore in a timely manner for further investigation and prosecution. The constitutionality of the Maritime Drug Law Enforcement Act and the Drug Trafficking Vessel Interdiction Act and the extent to which these same acts conform with international law, including customary international law and the 1988 UN Convention against illicit traffic in narcotic drugs, have been repeatedly litigated and upheld by the U.S. federal courts, the USCG also noted. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade will host a press conference in Kingston today, at which time it is expected to update the press on the issue. JBN, we keep you informed. Yeah.